It's been just a little over 16 hours since I made land here in Sydney, Australia, and well, I find myself a little surprised. Surprised by the land down under. Let me give you my first impressions of Sydney and Australia. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, from the future. That's right, check this out, y'all. It is 12.44 a.m. on December the 31st. Uh, many of you will be watching this on the East Coast, where it's only 12.15 p.m. on the 30th. How about that, Tony from the future? No, it's uh, like I said in the intro, I've been here a little over 16 hours and uh, it, it, again, I, I wasn't sure what to expect when I came to Australia, but I do have a few things that I want to point out as some first impressions. Uh, first and foremost, a big shout out to Ian Clement of the Uber Cruisers. Ian has been with the LocaFam since we had probably less than 500 subscribers. And uh, we have known Ian virtually for years. And when I announced this trip a few weeks ago, Ian immediately reached out and said, hey man, can I show you around Sydney? And uh, I was uh, super excited to get that invite, super excited to accept. I, I got to see so many parts of Sydney yesterday and um, it, it was awesome. And so uh, that's all attributed to Ian, my uh, leaving the airport and getting to my hotel. So easy. Uh, again, I'll just keep saying thank you. Thank you, Ian. Here, here are my first impressions and some things that surprised me about uh, Australia. Number one is how easy it was to go through customs. They have streamlined the customs process. Now, of course, my only other big jaunt outside of North America was to China, and that, that customs process was a little more involved. And let me say that. I, I've also had to go through customs in Cuba. That was a little more involved. Certainly, those are different circumstances and different relationships between the countries. But yeah, the, the customs process, very streamlined. As soon as I got off of the airplane yesterday, I scanned my passport and because of that scanning of the passport process it cuts out a lot of the human interaction part of the customs process they give you on the airplane a customs declaration form that you fill out and so really the only human interaction I had was to show that ticket where I'd scanned my passport and showed my customs declaration form the whole process took less than five minutes big surprise number two and I'm sure it's not only in Australia and I wish I would have taken some sort of video of it they have escalators that are on an incline escalators that do this not stair escalators you know what stair escalators are like no they have like legit incline escalators to take you from floor to floor in the car park that's a parking garage it's perfect for travelers because you can just put your luggage on there and not have to worry about manipulating your luggage on a stair type escalator yeah I, I wasn't expecting to see that first time I'd ever seen that in my life I know it's something simple and I'm sure many of you have probably seen that but it, it was uh, pretty cool and then the the third big shocking thing is well I, I didn't realize that they don't drive on the same side of the road as we do here in the United States or as we do over there in the United States wherever the United States is at this point steering wheel is on the right side of the car and so as I approached Ian's car he's like are you driving and I'm like no I'm not driving he didn't say that but that would have been a funny thing to say but he was like no the the passenger side is the other side. So sure enough, uh, I, I piled into the left-hand side of the car and it was raining in Sydney. And one thing I had never noticed, I'd, I'd ridden on the left side of the car as a passenger before in some of the Caribbean islands where they drive on the other side of the road. But I did not realize that the windshield wipers work differently on cars where the steering wheel is on the different side of the car. So this is my assumption. Maybe some car person can confirm it for me, but I'm assuming that the blades always wipe toward the wheel. So in the US, when you're driving and you're, you know, the driver's on the left side, the wipers go like this and wipe toward the wheel on the left. Now in Ian's car, when he was on the right, the wipers, they wipe toward the right. I don't know if you've experienced that before, but the other thing that people said about Australia is that the water, it swirls in a different way in the toilet. The toilet I have in the hotel here, it's its almost like a cruise ship toilet. It's like just sucks all the stuff out. I haven't seen any swirls, so I cannot confirm 
or deny the Australian swirl conversation. But uh, I have been looking, and this is, yeah, that's another thing that surprised me since I've been in Sydney. I've been looking at the toilets to see how the water swirls. Thanks, everybody, on the internet for putting that in my head. Uh, but yeah, that was a big surprise, jumping in on the passenger side and then getting accustomed to driving around Sydney. You know, when Ian was making turns, I, you know, I assumed that we were, like, you know, driving right into traffic, right? This is the thing when you're not used to, you know, going different ways or the wheel being on the different side of the car. All of a sudden, everything you know about driving has changed. And I'm like, are we going to be in an auto accident? It was awesome. Ian was great. Uh, again, a great sightseeing host and a great driver. And it brings me to my next surprise. I did not anticipate Sydney to be so hilly. You know, we start to conceptualize what this place seems like in our mind. And there's a lot of different vibes for Sydney from the geography. It's a coastal town. So you have a lot of water next to rocks, which kind of reminds you of the west coast of the United States, opposed to the, you know, the, the, the flat part of the eastern United States, the coastal uh, plains over there. When we hit the roads and it was super hilly, it certainly had a San Francisco vibe. And so, uh, yeah, I did not anticipate that Sydney would be super hilly. Uh, but it was cool. Uh, it was it was less cool when we had to you know park the car and walk up and down these hills to get to places. But the exercise was good. The, look, I just came off of traveling for close to 22 hours. I did try to sleep on the airplane, but as the morning went on, uh, Ian picked me up around 7 a.m. and uh, we stayed together until after lunch. But the wild thing is because of my the, my body clock or whatever, it felt like we'd hung out into the evening. But it really was only like 12 o'clock when we split ways. Coming off that plane and walking up and down the hills the old body was none too excited it's like man dude, you're gonna have to take a break at some point but uh yeah that's why i'm recording at 12 44 because when i finally got in my hotel at three i couldn't get my room until three and i think by four o'clock i went to sleep and i, I just i had my alarm set i was going to sleep from 4 p.m to 6 p.m uh, when I woke up at 6 p.m., it's like, no, I think I have to sleep more. I turned the alarm off, and then the next time I woke up, it was 11.30 p.m., so uh, I got a massive dose of sleep. Now, I'm going to try to go back to sleep because I have a huge day later today going and seeing the fireworks, but we'll see how it works out. That's a whole jet lag, time change kind of thing. That's not unique to Australia. That's just unique to leaving your time zone. The other thing that was interesting to me about Sydney is it's a huge, huge city with big buildings and lots of residential areas, but it also has a, a huge amount of, of beaches, uh, like an amalgam of coastline type stuff, beach neighborhoods, beach towns. We went to uh, Koji, that's a beach area. We went to La Perouse, not necessarily a beach area, but a neighborhood on the coast. And then we went to the Crown Jewel of Beaches in Sydney. We went to Bondi Beach. And it's wild. When you enter these towns, it looks like a beach town, you know, like where you, you drive through a thoroughfare and there's shops on each side. I think you, you probably know what I mean when it has a beach vibe, those little neighborhoods. And it was a Friday after afternoon, Friday morning, really. Again, we were on the streets like at 8, 9, 10 a.m. And man, there were people at the beach. The more surfers than I'd ever seen in my entire life. People walking, hiking, walking around the rocks, walking on the coastal areas. Uh, it, it was vibrant. I mean, there was just a lot of people uh, out and about. Got to see Bondi Beach, which is, again, uh, kind of iconic when it comes to Sydney. But the thing that was also interesting to me is I did not understand, and I'd heard about this. I followed somebody on social media who goes swimming every day in Australia, and, and they're trying to say, you know, hey, there's a big swimming culture in Australia. I didn't realize that until we went to, uh, got ready to go to lunch, which was at a place called the Bondi Icebergs. And it's a private club, and it's a private swimming club. This is the Bondi's Iceberg Private Swimming Club. Okay, now, it's 3.03 a.m. now. I've got an hour and 15 minutes left before the deadline, but I wanted to jump in during the edit and say, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Bondi. I don't know why when I was recording a couple hours ago I was saying Bondi, Bondi, but uh, just in case anybody gets triggered out there. Uh, but yeah, let me show you the Bondi Iceberg Swimming Club. Now, it's private in a couple different ways. Like, you have to be a member to be able to swim in the pool there. And membership has to do with your proximity to that location. I don't know how close you have to be. But they do let non-members come in and do lunch there. And so we had lunch there at the Bondi Icebergs Private Swimming Club. And it overlooked Bondi Bay, Bondi Beach. It, it was pretty amazing, but it brought me to the next surprise. So I was surprised about the swimming culture. And then the next surprise is that they put beetroot 
they put beetroot on all of their hamburgers. And so I was reading the uh, description of the hamburger that I had for lunch. And I said, Ian, what is beetroot? And he said, it's beets. And I was like, that's what I thought it was. But do you, do you really put beets on your hamburgers? And they're like, yeah. But yeah, we put beets on everything. Beets on all the hamburgers. And I'm like, all right, I'll eat it like that. It was delicious. I was surprised to find beets on the hamburgers. And hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this little glimpse into international travel, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more information coming to you about Australia and New Zealand. And the best way to stay up to date is to be subscribed with the notification bell on. I'm going to tell you about all things carousing, all of that fun stuff. Uh, subscribe, notification bell. Thank you in advance. So after we had our lunch there at the uh, Bondi Icebergs, Liam brought me over to my hotel. And as we were coming to the hotel, I had another huge re revelation. First and foremost, like the downtown area that I'm staying near the harbor, this whole area, it's it's huge. You know, big buildings everywhere. And then there's a lot of people in Sydney. I, let me look up exactly the population of Sydney. Sydney, 5.3 million people, according to data from 20. 19. I've not seen this many people on the street since I'd spent some time like in New York or even a little bit of time walking around Los Angeles. It's a, it's a big city like that. I don't know why I didn't know that or think that that would be the case. Uh, but yeah, just uh, people at cafes and people on the street and people at the beach and it was just people everywhere. It really started to, uh, you know, you know, open my eyes to this idea that I'm going to be around a lot of people for the next few days. The area that we're staying in is going to be closed off later on today. There's signs up everywhere that they're going to tow your car, that you have to have a ticket to be in the area if you're going to some sort of fireworks viewing. And this area right where I'm at, they anticipate that there'll be 1.5 million people down here celebrating the New Year's and watching the fireworks display. So those are some of my first impressions and some surprises that I had coming here to Sydney. Uh, how about you? Are you somebody who's not from Australia that's traveled here? Uh, did any of these things surprise you? What were some things that surprised you? I feel like I need to make myself go back to sleep for a little bit and then get up and do some more work. I got to tell you guys about the airplane and all that stuff, but uh, I wanted to check in before your day of the 30th escaped or yeah i don't know at the time i'm in the future hope you guys are doing well do me solid hit the like button check out this next video that youtube recommends this is tony for la lido look until the next time we'll see you on the lido bye